So I believe I've given you a uh, description of what the hypergeometric distribution is, but we didn't actually get to uh, work any examples using the hypergeometric distribution. All right. So here's our formula for the hypergeometric distribution. Let's work through the example that uh, your book gives. And it says suppose that a shipment from this semiconductor plant contains 30 memory chips of which two are bad. If a memory board requires 16 chips, what is the probability distribution for the number of defective chips on the memory board? Okay. So the number of defective chips would be two. Two are bad. And we know probability distribution for the number of defective chips. All right, your book says the random variable under consideration is given as capital X, the number of defective chips. So a success here would be a defective chip. If we want to figure out the probability distribution, remember that's not just for for one value, that's for x equals 0, for x equals 1, for x equals 2. So we'll have to calculate all of those values to form our probability distribution. So let's start out and let's say the probability that capital X equals 0. Okay, and we're going to use this formula here. So, capital A is the number of possible successes. This little x here, that's going to be the number of successes. So, we have to work out the combination 0, 2. All right, and then we say that times the combination. Now, this is capital N minus capital A. So that's going to be, there are 30 total memory chips. And then capital A, the number of successes possible, is 2, divided by combination. All right, the total population again is 30. And then lowercase n, the size of the sample drawn. It says a memory board requires 16 chips. Okay. So if we work out those combinations, then we should get um, the probability for exactly zero getting exactly zero defective chips. So remember each probability or each combination here, remember combination, if I use this same, if I use the notation here, um, 
guess you could say this is well if I just use the same thing here then that's going to equal to what x I'm sorry a factorial over a minus x factorial times x factorial. That's just that very first combination there. This one right here was n minus a. I did it's supposed to be 30 minus, what was A? 2. So it's actually 30 minus 2. I don't know why I didn't write that in there. And then that's 2 minus 0. So that, I mean, working out a combination like that with 28, that's going to be a pretty big number. What now? Let's see, it's lowercase n minus x. Lowercase n is the sample size. I don't know what I'm thinking here. So what's that going to be? 16 minus the lowercase x. So on this one, it'll be 0. Yeah. That makes that one a little bit easier to work out. Anytime you don't have a number that's somewhere close to the top number here, then you have a big problem because most calculators won't store it. All right, anyway, let's start working these out. So that's going to be 2 factorial divided by 2 minus 0 is 2 factorial and then times 0 factorial. So that's just this first part here. So that's going to be 1. You can tell that'll cancel out. 0 factorial is defined as 1. Alright, and so then that's that times, because we just did that part there, now this is 28 factorial over 28 minus 16 factorial times 16 factorial. So just that part, you, know, you have to simplify between the 28 and the 16 factorial. That's going to make it easiest if you're trying to do this with a very simple calculator. Um, so this part right here is 28 times 27 times 26 times 25 times 24 times 23 times 22 times 21 times 20 times 19 times 18 times 17 times 16 factorial. And the reason I stopped at 16 factorial is because that number is also in the denominator. So that's going to be, so we have, oh no, that's 12. So we have 12 factorial minus six or times 16 factorial in the denominator. So what you might want to do is just say 28 times 27 times 26 all the way down to 17 and then divide by 12 factorial hit equals and you should get a whole number. Okay. Let's see.
you can see this number got really big. That's the numerator. Then I'm going to divide by 12 factorial equals. So I got 30 million. 421,755. If there is a good thing about combinations and permutations and formulas that have those, it's kind of always a check because you have to get a whole number, right? If you don't get a whole number, then you probably punch something in wrong in your calculator. So this part right here is that 30,421,755. Okay. That's going to be divided by, and what this is going to give us, this isn't going to give us a whole number once we divide by this other combination. It's going to give us the probability of getting exactly zero defective chips. If we choose 16 out of 30. Okay, so we'll say 30 factorial divided by, that's going to be 30 minus 16 factorial times 16 factorial. Okay, so that part there, that's 30 factorial over 14 factorial times 16 factorial. If your calculator will handle those numbers, then you can just punch it in as it is. Maybe putting parentheses in the right places would help you. Um, more than likely it won't, so you would need to reduce this 30, uh, especially if you have a, a calculator that's not very powerful. You'd want to reduce this 30 factorial down all the way until you get to 16 factorial and cancel out with a denominator. So I'm going to see if this calculator will handle what I'm talking about. So what you would have, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the numerator in parentheses and the denominator in parentheses and see if it'll work it. So 30 factorial, see I have it in parentheses up here. It's so large that you can see this plus 32. It's given me some type of rounded value, but hopefully the calculator stores the actual value. See, divided by, and then again, I'm going to put this in parentheses to make sure it divides by the whole thing. 14 factorial times 16 factorial, and I'm going to close my parentheses and then I'm going to hit equals. Okay, so it gave me 145 million four hundred and twenty two thousand six hundred and seventy five. So if your calculator will handle those numbers and you get that whole number answer then you know you put it in right. So the way that we get the actual probability we have to say our first combination gave us 1 times the next combination gives us 30,421,755 divided by that 145,422,655 675. Alright, so this should give us a number less than 1 because it's a probability. So that will be another key to us messing up if we don't get a number that's smaller than 1. Alright, and I believe we get, if you rounded this to 3 digits, you get 0.209. So if we were making a table, let me skip down a little bit. If I was making a distribution table, then I'd have x in one column, and then I'd have the probability of x in another column, and for zero, 
I would have 0 0.209. Okay. And so now I need to figure out 1 and I need to figure out 2. And to do that, we're going to work the exact same problem except the little x here is 1. And then we'll do it again. Little x is 2. And you see what that changes? That changes this bottom number here on the first combination. And then that changes the bottom number here on the second combination in the numerator. But the denominator stays the same. So once we calculate that denominator, we don't have to do it again. All right. So if I'm going to let capital X equal 1, then I'm going to have the combination, remember this is little x, to A, the number of successes, which in this problem was defective chips. And we'll say that times the top number here for the combination stays the same. All right, because it's capital N minus capital A. So that's going to be 30 minus 2. And then this bottom number here, before it was 16, the number of chips taken, that was the ones on the board, minus the number of successes, or, I'm sorry, yeah, that would be success being a defective chip over and then the denominator stays the same okay so it's going to be 2 factorial divided by 1 factorial times 1 factorial times 28 factorial over 28 minus 15 factorial times 15 factorial. Right, divided by, and then all that is going to be the same, that 145,422,675. Now this first combination is really easy to work out. It's just 2. 2 factorial is 2 divided by 1 divided by 1. I can probably use my calculator to get this second one if I'm very careful. So I'm going to say 28 factorial, and I'm going to put it in parentheses, divided by, and I'm going to put the denominator in parentheses. That's going to be 13 factorial times 15 factorial. So 13 factorial times 15 factorial. I'm going to close the parentheses. And so right now, this big long number in here, that's 13 factorial times 15 factorial. So on the Windows calculator, you have to put equals. And you can see I got a whole number, so more than likely I got this part right. So it's 37,442,160. Times thirty seven million four hundred forty two thousand one hundred and sixty divided by one hundred forty five million four hundred twenty two thousand six hundred seventy five. Okay. So if I round that to three decimal places, I'd get 0.515. Alright, so if I go down here to my table that I made, then right here when x equals exactly 1, probability is 0.515. Right. 
Now I need the probability of getting exactly two defective chips. All right, so that's going to be combination. Um, we have two and two. Just remember, this is the total number of successes. This is the lowercase x, the actual number of successes, times the combination of, now how does this change? It's going to be 30 minus 2, so that's not going to change. This bottom number here will, it's 16 minus 2. And then the denominator is not going to change. So this first combination, that's going to be 2 factorial divided by 2 minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial. So 2 minus 2 factorial is 0 factorial, which is 1. 2 factorial divided by 2 factorial is 1 times I have 28 factorial over, it's going to be 28 minus 14, so that's 14 factorial times 14 factorial, that's all over that same number. Okay, just to save some time, work that out in the calculator, you should get 0.276. All right. So down here where I made my table, where x equals exactly 2, 0.2. Point two seven six, yeah. So this would be the probability distribution. You know, if you were to make a table given all the values. Now most problems, you know, homework problems would say something like the probability of exactly getting zero defective chips or the probability of getting at least one defective chip things like that so but we worked out all three of those there um, the next part of the problem the working with those same numbers says that if we have a hypergeometric distribution then we can find the expected value by saying lowercase n times capital A over capital N. So remember what those variables stand for. Lowercase n, we have the size of the sample drawn which is 16 chips, capital A, the number of successes possible. It says two of these are bad out of the 30. And then capital N is the size of the total population. So that's going to be 30. So in our problem, And that's just going to be 16 times 2 divided by 30. So that's 16 divided by 15, or 1.067. 
So that's our expected value. So what that means is if you run this same experiment over and over and over lots of times then you will on average get a little bit over one defective chip over the course of time. Um, there is a formula, formula for the variance for a hypergeometric and it is lowercase n times a capital A over capital N that's the same part we just calculated times 1 minus capital A over capital N times capital N minus lowercase n over capital N minus 1 It's just a little bit longer formula, but it's pretty easy to calculate because all we're doing is just plugging in numbers. So that would be 16 times 2 over 30 minus, or times 1 minus 2 over 30 times. 30 minus 16 over 30 minus 1. Okay. So just work out each part of that, simplify it. It looks like you get about 0 0.481. So suppose a batch of 50 light bulbs contains three light bulbs which are defective. Let capital X equal the number of defective light bulbs in a random sample of 10 light bulbs where the sample is taken without replacement. What is the probability distribution of X? So, it did not really ask us to uh, make a table, but with some of these, you know, depending on uh, whether we have 0, 1, 2, or 3, we'll have different probabilities, right? So, we need to maybe, there's a couple of things that aren't going to change depending on which probability we're looking at. And that would be capital N, population, that's going to be 50, right, 50 light bulbs. Capital A will be the possible number of successes, which in this case is a defective light bulb, so that's 3. And then lowercase n, the number of light bulbs that's being taken, um, that's the random sample of 10 light bulbs. All right, so part A says, what is the probability distribution? So our formula uh, that well, well, part A is what we just listed, really. That's it's a hypergeometric distribution. And again, if you wanted to work out all of these for part A, that wouldn't be wrong, but uh, because we're going to have to use all those values anyway. Capital uh, uh, Part B says find the expected number of defective light bulbs. That's the expected value. And we had a formula that was lowercase n times capital A over capital N. So the number of taken times the possible number of successes over the total population. So that's going to be 10 times 3 over 50, or 3 fifths. 
right, which is 0 0.6. So what that means is over time if you if you did this experiment over and over and over you would get an average of 0 0.6 um, defect of light bulbs in your sample. But you can't get 0.6 light bulbs, but over a, over a long time that's what you would get on average. Alright, part C says find the standard deviation. So even though we didn't have a formula for the standard deviation, we had a formula for the variance. And remember, the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. Um, so the variance, if you look back at your formula, first you start off really with the expected value. That's the first part. It's lowercase n times capital A over capital N. So we know what that part is. That's 0.6 times 1 minus capital A over capital N. So that's going to be 1 minus 3 over 50. Right? Because that was capital A over capital N. And then that times capital N minus lowercase n. So that's 50 minus 10 over capital N minus 1. So over 50 minus 1. Right. Should be able to do that in the calculator fairly easy. Um, let's see. So 0 0.6 times 1 minus, we'll say, 3 divided by 50. Uh -oh. Let's start over. 0 0.6 times 1 minus. 3 divided by 50 times 40 divided by 49. Alright, so that long decimal that I have there 0 0.460408, so on and so forth. That's the variance. If I take the square root of the variance, I get the standard deviation. So that is, if I round it to four places, that would be 0 0.6785. So that's the standard deviation. Find the probability that at least one. Hmm. Alright, there's a couple of ways to do at least one. Probability that capital X is greater than or equal to one, that means at least one, is equal to two things. It's either equal to the probability capital X equals 1 plus the probability capital X probability capital X equals 2 plus the probability of 3 So that's one way to work it out. Another way to work out at least one, remember, 
since all of the probabilities have to add up to equal 1. You can say the probability of at least 1 is equal to 1 minus the probability of 0. Because the probability of 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3, in this case, since we know that there are only 3 defective light bulbs, the sum of all those have to be equal to 1. So the probability of at least 1 is equal to 1 minus the probability of none. Either way, you'll get the same answer. Okay. So, if I do the easier option, would be the second option here. I need to figure out the probability that we would get zero defective light bulbs. Okay and then I'll subtract that from 1. So that's going to equal the combination this would be 3, 0 times the combination this top number is capital N minus capital N minus capital A. And capital A was three. So that's going to be 47 and then this here the possible number or the total sample sorry is 10 and then divided by we have 50 total light bulbs we're taking 10. Alright so that would be equal to 3 factorial divided by 3 minus uh, 0 is 3 factorial times 0 factorial. So all that's just equal to 1. That's pretty easy to work out. And then times 47 factorial over 47 minus 10 is 37 factorial and then times 10 factorial and that's all over 50 factorial divided by 50 minus 10 so that's 40 factorial times 10 factorial so what you might want to do is just work each one of those factorials separately um, remember you should get some type of whole number for each one of those and then when you divide you're going to get a decimal okay. so let's see have one for the first one I'm going to say 40, well let me put it in parentheses, 47 factorial divided by 37 factorial times 10 factorial. see I got a whole number there it's really big that is 5 billion 178 million or wait 100 and, yeah 178 million zero six six seven five one all right over <coughs> fifty factorial. 
divided by 40 factorial times 10 factorial that's 10 billion 272 million Two hundred seventy-eight thousand one hundred seventy. All right. Again, you can kind of check yourself as you go because for all these combinations, you should be getting whole numbers, uh, integers. Now, I'm going to divide, and you should get a decimal. Remember, this is a probability, so. You should get something less than one. Okay. So I got point five zero four. I guess point five zero four one if I wanted to round that. 0.5041 and so that's the probability of exactly zero so if I chose 10 light bulbs the probability of getting exactly zero um, defective light bulbs would be that well the probability of at least one is one minus probability of zero so that would be 1 minus, I hate to throw a round value in here, I don't think it'll mess up our final answer. Even if we put the exact and round it, I believe we'd get the same. So since I did put a round value in there, I'm going to put these little squiggly lines. But that'll be 0 0.4959. So that was C, the probability for, uh, wait, no, that was D, sorry. The probability on E, you should get 0 0.9939. And then the probability you should get on F is going to be 0 0.0061. Just to give you a little extra to practice there.